Well, uh, welcome to another uh, Ride Along with Goggles tutorial. And this one's going to be on my, uh, you know, it's uh, about my Toby 5 eye tracker settings and what I have it set for and what the results that it gives me are and why I use it the way I do and uh, or why I've con configured it the way I have. So um, what we'll do, I'll just give you a little demonstration here in the uh, driver's seat about what's going on when I move my head and what I see. So right now I'm, you know, I'm sitting here, I'm moving around a little bit in my chair and, you know, I'm not bouncing all over the place, but it's reasonably sensitive. So, but it's not crazy. And the big one I find is, uh, and somebody asked me the question in a video comment, uh, you know, what are, what are my settings and how do I get it where it is? And uh, it takes a lot of fiddling with Toby actually. And so I'll give you a quick rundown on what I'm doing and you can screenshot my screen if you want and uh, and set your settings the same if you like or whatever. Uh, I can actually, actually, I could also put the config file or whatever on my uh, Discord. Uh, we'll see. Anyway, so when I move my head, I have uh, the pitch setting, which is the up and down. I've got a way, a very low sensitivity on that so I can move my head up and down quite a bit and nothing really moves until I really put my head down or really put my head up and there's no you know I don't see a lot of point to having this really sensitive because you want to gaze around the cockpit and look at gauges and look at things and you know you want to be able to do stuff without it being really distracting and jittery so I have that pitch sensitivity way down and then I have the delay on yaw. So yaw is when you turn your head from one side to the other side, and you can turn it around further. You know, you can look out the back, or you can turn around a little more and look out the uh, look in the rear. And uh, I have the initial uh, resistance to movement uh, fairly high. So in other words, you got to move your head. I so I got to move my head like one, two, three, four. You know, five degrees to the right, kind of. I'm looking at. So let's do that again. I'm gonna just take my head and move fairly quickly to the hula girl. And well, let's say I'm gonna focus on the you know, those two black speakers right beside the hula girl. I'm gonna move my head really quickly to there. And you don't really see anything. But if I'm gonna go beyond that point, now you see some movement. So what that does is it lets me move my head around the cockpit, left or right, a little bit. And so I, right now I'm rolling my head in a big circle. Well, not a huge circle. You're barely seeing a lot, much movement in the cab, which is what you want. Because you want to be able to look around, see stuff without, and bring your eyes back to the road. And you're still, you know, you've got your point of reference. The, the, your, uh, your gun sight on the tip of the hood there is still pointing down the shoulder of the road and nothing got moved all over and you're not all your equilibrium is not all messed up when you come back to the forward view so i can look around i can look over there whatever i come back it's where it was so instead of having this and then back oh, where was i so i've got to move beyond that point of those two speed those two uh vents on the dash and once i move beyond there it starts to really move and it'll actually accelerate a little bit. And so, and you want that, because if you want to look in the right-hand mirror, you know, you need it to go fairly quickly. So you, you glance at the right-hand mirror, boom, it's there, left hand, it's there. And you've got to move beyond this point. So if I look left, I can look, you know, five degrees left and nothing much is going on. And then I snap my head over, there's the mirror. And the other thing that's really nice, and what I do if I'm in a tricky situation, and I don't want to get my eyes off the road in front of me, but I want to get that right-hand mirror, which on a cab over is way across the cab. It's way over there. Like this is a narrow cab. One of the things I like about these Peterbilts and stuff, they're really narrow. And the other mirror's right there like that. You get in the cab over like the K100 and the mirror's way the heck over there. And so you need to be able to get your eyes on that mirror and back on the road. So uh oh yeah and i don't have eye tracking enabled so with eye tracking not enabled it's perfect because what i can do i can leave my eyes pointing straight down the road so right now my head is moving right 
but my eyes are looking down the gun sight, the, the horns on the hood there, down the road, and my head is pointed right at the mirror. So, and my eyes aren't changing anything, just my head. So my eyes can be pointed down the road, and my head can be pointed at the mirror. So when I'm ready, I just snap my eyes in the mirror and then go back straight ahead. And so I'm really not losing any kind of concentration on anything. So that's super handy, uh, especially, you know, big loads, crazy trailers, uh, and you're all kind of jittery and you're in a tough place and, and you don't want to get your eyes off the road, but you need to see what's in the mirror. So you can, once again, eyes are straight ahead down the road, heads turning, eyes are cocked to the left. There's the mirror, snapped my eyes to the mirror, got my view, turned my head back. I'm, I haven't lost the sense of where I'm going down the road. So it's super important to me. And these settings uh, I find work pretty good. It's not the be all end all. It doesn't mean you have to use it or you know, do what you want. Some guys like the eye tracking. Personally, I, you know, it's great in an airplane cockpit. You can glance around and your head is still out the, the front and your eyes are moving around and changing things. But in the truck, I prefer it the other way where I can put my eyes wherever I want and I turn my head to get it ready and then I snap my eyes over and come back. So anyway, that's what I set up. I'll show you the settings in, uh, in the game, how I set that up. So it's under options into the steering wheel thingy. Scroll down. And uh, eye tracking is enabled. It knows it's a Toby. And you can go to Toby there if you want to set it up. But that's just calibration. That's if you got your thing calibrated, you're good and configure. Uh, what we've got is uh, extended view presets is custom. Head tracking mode is direct. You don't want indirect. I think it's indirect or dynamic. Yeah, let me forget it. Uh, enable position, yes. Yaw multiplier in cabin. Uh, so, multi so it multiplies the combined head and gaze rotation in the horizontal direction in the cabin. So I have it at just under three. Seems to work good. Pitch multiplier in cabin. That's that up down with the head. I got that way down. 0.44. Cause I don't see the need for having that. It just makes you almost seasick, you know, bouncing down the road and your head moves a bit and the view is going up and down like a yo-yo crazy. Y'all mud multiplier in walk mode. It doesn't really matter much, but this is um, also works when you're flying. So, you know, it's all right. Uh, I just, that's what I use, one. Pitch, multiplier, and walk. Leave it at one. Uh, gaze tracking. I have it turned off. So you take this slider, and you know, I can have all of these anywhere you want, but I put that to zero, and I have no eye tracking. It's just head. So that's essentially it right there in a nutshell. And uh, that's my head tracking graph and now here's this is the responsiveness and this is kind of important so um oh sorry this was all eye tracking up here all the way down to here so i disabled all of that sorry my bad misled you there let's go down to head tracking and this is oh it doesn't mean you can't set this oh now i'm really confusing you sorry uh, let's go back to the beginning and use this slide that all the way over don't use that sorry about that i'll keep coming down to head tracking in head view responsiveness this gives me that little lag that we saw okay how quickly so oh no wait a minute so this is combined with all of these other settings this is what's going to give you the speed and the responsiveness. So in other words, when you turn your head, does everything take off? And uh, at what rate? And um, so I, I put that at 40%. That seems to work pretty good. Head tracking, yaw in the cabin. So uh, this is the amount it will turn. And I don't have it going any more than 0.75 because as you saw, I can turn my head around and I can still see the screen, but I'm looking all the way out back down the side of the truck for an outside view. So you don't need it more than 0.75, I find. And I don't need to look in the back of the sleeper 
And uh, if you put this higher, what it'll do is it'll affect everything else, including this, where you turn your head to the right that uh, little bit. Well, it knows it's got a whole big sweep that it's responsible for. So it's going to move that little bit even faster, I think. And um, really annoying. So 0.75. Hold tracking pitch sensitivity in cabin. Or head tracking pitch sensitivity. I got that right down. Head tracking yaw sensitivity down. Head tracking pitch down. Head tracking expo exponent. And how gradually the speed ramps up. And this is that thing that's really handy when you want to look in the mirror. Where I was... Um, you know, I go over and glance towards the fence on the middle of the dash. And, uh, you know, and then once I get past that point, it starts to pick up speed and I move my head to the mirror. So it's essentially 1.5 times the speed. So in other words, I'm going, you know, X speed turning my head, but it's going to increase what I'm seeing in the rotation in the truck. So it gets my eyes on that mirror quicker. Uh, which is good. And the inflection point, let's see what it says about that. Yeah, so so I've got to go fairly far in the head rotation for that to flatten out. So for this one to stop having an effect where it sort of decreases, I've got to go this far for that to happen. So it goes, ramps up, and then it tapers off. That sets that. The start point, this is what gives you that ability to have a little bit of head movement without the camera moving. And that gives me, you know, when I was wobbling around the seat and you just saw a little bit of this, if I had that right down, you would have seen a bunch of this. I have it at 0 0.03 and it takes it, it just makes it a little, little less. And I find that at zero is bad and anything more is like uh, too lazy and uh, works pretty good. And the end point, and uh, so how far I have to turn to reach the maximum. If you speed this up, you or move this up, you've got to crank your head real far, and your your head will come off the screen. So quite often, you've got your head turned way over to the side, and you still want to be the still to keep your eyes on the screen. If you set that too high, you're not going to be able to. You're you're gonna. You know, your head will be over there and you'll be looking at the wall beside you. It's not not good. So and that's essentially it. That's the head tracking in a nutshell. So you can copy those down if you want and try them. Uh, and it may take some getting used to. Uh, auto pause I don't use. The only key I use is the reset. And that's the one where uh, if you see me in the cockpit you know every now and then you see me reach up to my dash and you see a little jiggle like that where the screen just changed that's resetting to the default position because you know you're driving down the road and you're doing this and doing that and you're looking around and yada yada you bounce up and down and after a little while uh toby might uh uh get um, a little discombobulated and you just hit the reset and it just re repositions everything Pretty important to have that. And sometimes you get in the truck and you'll go, you'll be up here, or, oh, that view isn't the one I used to have. What's going on? And you'll, you know, you hit the reset. It'll put it back where it was. Um, what else is there? Physically, your Toby, uh, if you have one, uh, you want to be able to, when you're looking at it, and you can see the red indicator on the right and the left, the uh, the little infrared cameras, not the two lights straight ahead, but the cameras on the extreme right and the extreme left. When you're looking at those, you want to have a really centered view on them where from your sitting position, you want to see a red circle, a black, a big red circle, a black inner circle, and then a little red dot. And they should all be concentric. And if you've got it concentric, you're going to have success. If you see uh, it's all off center, those little dots or whatever, it's you're not sitting in the right place. You don't, or sorry, you don't have it pointed where you're sitting. And uh, I think that's about it. Um, that's about it. I have um, USB ports on my monitor, 
And so what I do is I have my Toby plugged into my monitor. And that way when I turn the power off in the monitor, it turns Toby off. And uh, I find that to be a pretty beneficial in a way. And it frees up ports on my, because I mean, my PC's maxed out on USB ports as it is. But the side benefit of having it plugged into the monitor is I never have to worry about powering Toby off. It just, I hit the power button on the monitor and Toby's off. So pretty good. Works good. I never have to go in and reset the Toby eye tracking uh, software. I haven't touched it in a year, maybe. Um, just have your reset button. That's the important one. So hopefully all of that helps you a bit and um, helps you get along with Toby a little better. Uh, take care, guys, and we'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.